So today I got this uh, in the mail. That comes from eBay. Uh, got in an auction. Uh, I had an alert set for it, so when it showed up, I was quite uh, impressed. Like I didn't believe uh, I found this thing because I think it's quite rare. Uh, I've had alerts on uh, on eBay for this for I don't know, probably a year, maybe more, and suddenly it showed up. Uh, so grabbed it and here it is so what this is let's open it I'm glad it, it came in the in the original bag and everything really good condition so obviously that is a camcorder let me put the bag aside so this is the Mitsubishi CX6 camcorder and nothing really special about it um, in fact I didn't get it because of the camcorder itself it's pretty I mean standard camcorder nothing really special about it but there is this as you can see it says color true finder so the thing with this is uh, camcorders of uh, the era this is from 1992 they started to have LCD for uh, color and if you use CRTs for the viewfinder it was mostly black and white like I don't know how much uh, how many of these models were black and white but I'd say most of the CRT models uh, had black and white uh, viewfinders but this one is color um, it's got a it's got a quite a funny shape here and uh, the reason for that is because this is using a color wheel uh, which is a rotating uh, cone in fact not a disc it's a rotating cone uh, that switches between red green and blue in front of a black and white tube so this actually uses a black and white CRT with a filter uh, that turns really fast in front of it uh, so from the documentation I uh, read online it should be working at 150 Hertz so each color is displayed at uh, a third so 50 Hertz so that would be pretty impressive so I got my hands on it because I I'm not sure about that but I believe this is the latest and pretty much the only example of uh, the color wheel technology that was um, actually the first uh, technology used to bring color to CRTs back in the 40s so that looks like quite an example of uh, of that technology and quite recent at 1992 the camera itself looks to be in a uh, really good condition so I don't know much about the camera itself and frankly it didn't come with uh, the battery pack that goes here and no charger or anything like that, no power supply so I have no way of powering this up right now uh, so I'd say let's take it apart I won't take apart the camera, I'm just gonna open the, the viewfinder and see how it is inside so this is the first video uh, I'm probably not gonna take it completely off the camera for now I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'll see if I can power it up, but I don't think I'll be able to do this in this video. We'll see. But yeah, let's see what we can do with it. So I saw a few controls here. So the thing is, this pivots like that. So that's for uh, when it's in the bag, like this when you use it. And... Um, Looks like it got, it's got some screws here. So here is a control for brightness. So I don't know if I can make it focus. Let's let's go and focus this. So you can see here. Here we got the brightness control. And I believe yeah under here we got we got two more controls here. Color and tint. And uh, that's pretty much it for the controls we see outside so here I got my screwdrivers let's see if we can take it apart
Oh, actually, just just fits. Gets to the screw here. Nice. There we go. Oh. Well, that's actually nice. So there's this little door here that just fell when I removed the screw. And uh, I've never seen this. Uh, it actually gives access, if you can see here, it gives access to the neck of the CRT with the rings to I just uh, focus, convergence, actually not convergence because this does not have color, but uh, focus and geometry and stuff like that. So that's really nice because you don't risk touching something that you should not. You just have access here. It's really nice. Obviously, I'm not going to touch this. I hope the CRT is uh, set up properly. If I have to, I'm going to remove the glue here and uh, try to turn these. But hopefully, I won't have to do that. I don't think I, I, should, uh, I should have to do this because these small CRTs don't really go uh, out of uh, calibration easily. At least not the ones that I've seen so far. So I believe all the screws are removed. Oh, okay. So we got a lens here. Let's see if we can open this now. Looks like it wants to... Oh, oh yeah, there are clips. Nice. Trying to not break something. I intend on making a custom stand for the electronics and tubes and tube. I, I I'm not gonna keep it in the in the viewfinder housing, but still I don't want to break it. Obviously. Oh, it just came off. So it says caution high voltage. Obviously this. Uh, runs at like, I don't know, 2 kilovolts or something for the small CRT, maybe more. It's small, but it's high voltage still. So we got a shield here. Looks to be a really nice copper shield. And it, it actually is soldered on the bottom here. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a... Whoa. Little, little lens fell out. So there's like a, it's hard to focus this thing. It's got a blob of solder here on each side. So I won't be able to remove this. So hopefully now we can see things better in there. So we got this shield here. And there is a can where we can see some adjustments. I don't know what it says exactly on here. Let me have a closer look. It says, it's the other way. It just says VR seven V one A one A two. The electronics on here, all SMDs, but the size of the components looks like it could be easily uh, maintained, repaired if needed. These are not the smallest uh, parts looks like some are uh, 0805 and uh, there are no 043 or anything like that I mean maybe here but no I don't think so these are all hand solderable which is pretty neat so I'm gonna try to remove this PCB here because it looks like it can be removed without much issue it just moves out of the way here let me have a closer look so this might be actually soldered, but there is this, this ribbon cable here that I can remove, looks like. So I'm gonna pop this out. So the ribbon is removed, and this moves freely now. But it's the whole CRT um, that is uh, connected here so it does not look like this wants to really come off easily so I might not remove it but I can now show 
the way this is, and I'm going to uh, increase the brightness a little bit so we can see things better. The background is now really blown out, but at least we can see the inside of this thing really well. So here, you can see the screen of the CRT front of the tube here, so that's actually black and white. There's a little yoke, neck of the tube, and back there, there's the connector, the neck plug here, all the electronics, very compact, in fact. Trying to see where the flyback is, it's probably this thing down there. Bunch of through-hole caps, big through-hole resistor, green resistor here. Looks really nicely built and very, very compact. There's an inductor here, probably some power supply stuff. If I can focus, there you go. Some more shielding, actually all the, the copper goes here. Really well built. And there we can clearly see the, the colors. So if I turn this, you can see it goes from red, green, and blue, and over again. So it's like, on each rotation, you go twice through all the colors. So every time this uh, goes in front of red, the CRT is gonna show the red component of the picture. Then it's gonna show the green portion of the picture, followed by the blue, and over and over again. And that's how it's gonna compose the color picture with a black and white tube only, thanks to these filters. So, so obviously this thing here must rotate very precisely and be synchronized. So considering how many wires there are on this uh, ribbon cable here, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of signals to synchronize this. Very nice. So I'll, I'll be really curious to see this operating, but there's something that I, I'm noticing here, I'm not sure about it. But the way this CRT looks, let me get something. Uh, so the way this CRT looks, it reminded me of this one. As you can see here, the way the yoke is, is exactly the same with this um, heat shrink here, same thing. And you can see these adjustments here again, look very similar here. So it and frankly the size the size of the tube right here. Well maybe here it's actually a little bit bigger. I don't know about that. Might be a bit bigger than this one. But it might very well be the same tube. Actually I think this one is smaller. This one, if I'm not mistaken, this is the uh smallest black and white CRT tube uh, that has been used in a, in a uh, viewfinder. Uh, potentially the smallest black and white CRT tube ever made. I can't confirm that, but that's what I've seen online as well. So that's interesting. And it seems to, to remain the smallest one. This one is bigger, but it's probably the same yoke being used on the two. I don't know. So very interesting thing. Next step would be to power this up so I'm gonna have a look at something I'm gonna put it back together real quick at least trying to move the circuit here and I want to see how it is plugged in so we can see here I don't know if we can yeah we can see this here so down there right here is a plug that goes JST I believe this is the name of it I'm not sure but this is the, the plug that goes inside the camera and that provides power and uh, this is actually using composite uh, like any standard uh, anal console or stuff so we could easily send a composite from I don't know a Super Nintendo or something to it and display it on the screen so the, the CRT is really really small here but the reason why they were trying to use uh, CRT tubes when LCDs already existed is simply because um, 
Black and white tubes like this one can have a really, really sharp picture and show a lot of details that LCDs back in the early 90s uh, were just not able to display. So this is a much sharper uh, type of viewfinder compared to a LCD viewfinder from the time. Obviously nowadays we came really a long way for this and uh, anything recent would blow this away obviously but for 1992 this was probably one of the sharpest if not the sharpest viewfinder uh, that existed at the time uh, and it was colored because of this so it basically kept the advantages of uh, black and white CRTs uh, with their sharpness and added color with this filter um, so it's the best of both worlds here so really really interesting really neat uh, device here um, so yeah uh, now the thing is, I would like to try and unplug this. So I'm going to de-zoom this a bit. So I would like to try and unplug this. And see if we can move this a bit more. Somehow, we need to remove this from the camera. And I have no idea how it is attached. So this, there's some uh, metal stuff going on here. No cap. Uh, it looks like it could just be moved somehow, but... Uh, oh yeah, this, there we can see the... Yeah, there we can see this is the flyback, I think. Looks like a metal can. I don't know if we can clearly see it, but yeah, there's like a... It's not just the sticker, it goes a bit further. That looks like the flyback. This is some sort of a isolation. I'm not going to remove it yet. Yeah, I say yet, because obviously I'm going to remove all of this and move it somewhere else. Hopefully that's not going to be too complicated to do. So there, I got my pliers here. So I'm going to try to remove, so we can't really see much, sorry for the quality of the video, like the light, it's really blown up, but I'm trying to, to show this and we can barely see it, so yeah. So I'm just trying here to remove this connector down there, hopefully not break anything. Whoa, oh, wow, okay. So I was not expecting this. So there is this connector here. It's really nice. There's this connector that plugs in here. Yeah, if I can hold this. I guess I need more hands than just two for this. <laughs> so there's this uh, connector here, just goes in this one. It's really nice. And now we can clearly see the flyback here. Awesome. So basically this whole board can be removed separately from the rest. Now I can easily disconnect this. So now we can have a closer look at this board. can see two controls here. These, I believe, are the controls for color and uh, tint that are accessible from outside. This is a complete um, copper tape shielding. And under here, two more controls that are obviously not accessible from outside since they are be behind the shield. And this is for a screw, I think. Very nice. I love the modularity of this. So I can move this aside. And now we can have a closer look at this. Much better look, in fact. So this board is not in, this, in, this, in its location anymore. I'm going to try and move stuff a bit here. So we can have a better look. Let's put it in. I really don't know how it was uh, installed. I believe it was just like this this plastic cover going here something like that yeah looks good uh, so I think I just put it in but in fact let's remove it I think now this whole assembly should be removed pretty easily not sure that's actually a wise idea to do it now um, the tube itself seems to be locked in position with this but nice thing is I see just a couple screws if I can show here one here and one down there and I think 
the whole motor assembly here is one part uh, with the tube so if I unscrew these two I believe the tube can be removed alongside all of that stuff so that would make it really nice for me to make a an external uh, kind of um, I don't know, show, showcase stuff. I built the same thing and actually let me grab this uh, really quickly to show you what I'm talking about when I when I say I want to make a, a stand for it. So I'll be right back. So it's that was uh, some time ago I made this thing and I haven't made a video or anything about it but this is in fact another really special type of viewfinder much bigger as you can see here tube in comparison to these tiny little tubes it's really nothing similar but it was a much bigger viewfinder for a I believe it was a Hitachi uh, CKC 010 or something like that I'm just gonna write it down here uh, if I can find the right number there are two models uh, so the thing is, this is uh, also a color viewfinder setup, but it's less sharp than the one we just saw because this is very special. The tube here is not actually black and white. This is a Indextron type of tube. It's a Beam Index. Sorry, I was looking for the name. Indextron is the Sony brand uh, name for the technology but it's a uh, beam index CRT so the thing with this tube here is uh, this tube looks like a standard black and white tube but it's got stripes of colors on screen there is no grid like uh, there is no mask there is no shadow mask or a aperture grill or anything it's just the, the stripes of phosphor on the screen vertical uh, like it would be for example in the Trinitron with uh, stripes but no mask here and after the colors there's like uh, RGB but also UV there is a ultraviolet stripe as well and every time the beam scans and hits the ultraviolet um, stripe this is actually a sensor so I'm gonna remove this it's a small shroud and you can see there are two sensors here so this one I believe is for the ultraviolet and this one is for green because the green stripe is wider than the others and the middle of the green stripe is um, a little bit different and is tuned for this sensor so every time the beam scans it's gonna know because of these sensors that the beam just hit green and the beam just hit UV and just after UV is like red so it's gonna be able to time the circuit to tell um, the gun here what color is being hit so it's gonna show the right color at the right time so the nice thing with this type of tube here is if you take a magnet for example in front of it you know for a standard uh, Trinitron or a shadow mask CRT if you take a magnet close to the screen it's gonna distort the colors completely but with this one if you take a magnet nearby it's not gonna it's, it's gonna obviously uh, distort the, the, the linearity of the picture but it's not gonna change the colors because the way the beam scans it's always gonna hit green and this is gonna detect that it's green if that makes sense so yeah this is very very special so the thing is that was a viewfinder originally and I designed this whole um, 3d printed uh, shell to house all the electronics inside so I'm gonna show it in a moment and the, the tube itself is mounted on the top um, all the wires for the yoke goes through here so to actually have the wires pass through I had to deep in the connector and pass the wires and to pass these wires for the the neck uh, plug here there's a little little slot here that just has a piece of plastic slide slide in to 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 make sure that the cables are not loose and to make it look cleaner and same thing here for this one which is the um, the anode cap again these tubes need to be really careful because these tubes have high voltage and there is something else as you can see here the face of the tube just like a big CRT in a monitor or TV this is the aquadag so this is um, ground this is grounded so it must be grounded and as you can see everything here is plastic so what I did is 
inside this uh, little uh, cover shroud thing that holds the CRT in place, there is a wire that goes through this and touches, touches sorry, the aquadag at the bottom of the tube right here to make contact. Otherwise, it would just create a whole so, a whole lot of uh, weird stuff, and I don't believe I don't remember, but interferences, I think. And obviously, it could be when you touch it, you get you get zapped a little bit. So now you don't because it's properly grounded. All connections that are here are under plastic uh, covers and such. So technically, there's no real risk here. But yeah, obviously, around here you should not put your hands on. So I had plans for making some sort of uh, cover here, but I didn't. It's really it's fine here like that. And what what this is is um, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, there are two little wires poking here, I didn't solder them because it was working and I didn't want to solder the Raspberry Pi in case I want to remove it but obviously it should be soldered. Uh, so these two little pins here take uh, the composite of output of this and there is no card so I can plug it in right now and plus there is no uh, plug on, the, on the, the end of the wires or anything but it works. I seem to remember the colors are a bit off on this one so maybe there's a, an issue with the electronics but I got uh, a few more of these viewfinders so I can uh, play around and see uh, what works and what doesn't maybe swap the electronics and stuff and stuff later I'll see um, so yeah I'm gonna put this back but this is just the this is a hi-fi berry it's a sound card a DAC uh, a sound card so we can plug in um, speakers here but the reason why I put this and obviously it's not finished is these are speakers. These actually come from a, these little Bluetooth speakers from, um, I don't remember, I'm gonna write it down here. Anyway, um, so I, I managed to, to completely take it apart and integrate this here. So let's have a look at the first at the back. And as you can see, compared to, for example, uh, this little guy here, uh, you can see everything is integrated pretty much into that this one chip here. So there's, there's the flyback, one chip, a few components, and that's literally it. Like if you look underneath, there are just a few components like uh, a couple uh, capacitors, transistor, and stuff. But it's very very simple because this came out really late uh, in the uh, in the 90s, and we had ICs that integrated pretty much everything for viewfinders. That's really, really nice. But let me move this. This being a very uh, custom type of, uh, of device here with um, electronics to, to separate the colors and send them um, one after the other, synchronized with the uh, sensors here. There's a lot of electronics uh, going on there. As you can see, the whole inside of this box is just filled with boards. Uh, that was not the main goal of this video, but since we are at it, I'm just gonna take it apart and being careful because I don't want to break the tube or anything, but I'm just gonna give you a quick look inside just to see what it is, uh, how it is made. Try to not mix screws between this and uh, the thing I just took apart. And then the front was attached using these screws here. so. I can just set them loose like this and take, um, just, okay, that might be the wrong one. Need a slightly bigger one. Well, if this is gonna do, yeah, perfect. There, this, and there. I have four, I mean, I mean four feet, two more here, but I don't know, I use them for something else temporarily. I don't know where these are. Um, there we go. This plate can be removed. And as you can see, big board, there's, there are three printed parts everywhere. The, the back here is 3D printed. And this, in fact, is the big uh, box that houses the speakers. Um, as you can see, speakers are here, the box. And um, it's for uh, low frequencies, bass. So it just sounds better. I don't remember how it does sound, but I think it sounds pretty nice. Um, pretty good. So this here, 
as you can see there's a notch and stuff here there's a lot of adjustments to make here fortunately i did not have to print this like five times but i did have to print this like maybe two three times for sure uh, to make sure everything's aligned so we got um, some standoffs here also 3d printed um, to space the boards uh, then it's bolted to the top and uh, that was a nightmare to make this thing because well the sensors are inside there's a cable that goes through here there's a speaker underneath well <laughs> that was quite something but then there's something else that I made and again as I said this is not quite finished yet and there we go so the thing is with that I made a little box with a flap uh, door and you can fit two 18650s in there and obviously I didn't I don't have the um, the springs and stuff yet to bridge them and stuff but the thing is it would my goal was to make this work on two 19 uh, sorry 18650s and be self-contained so that would power the Raspberry Pi that would power the CRT and everything and frankly with two batteries like this of I don't know like uh, 2600 uh, milliamp hours it would last quite quite some time really quite a few hours that would be really neat so the thing is with this as you can see it's a pretty well uh, pretty neat self-contained um, show piece for uh, technology so my goal was to make something similar to this for every uh, single CRT technology there is so that would be uh, the main technologies that would be beam index for this one would be um, color wheel for this one obviously this is incredibly tiny so I intend on making something else for this um, I'll see what I can do with this one it won't be exactly uh, looking like this and then there is um, Trinitron so for Trinitron let me show you if I can find it sure enough here it is boxes from USPS considering I'm nowhere near the US kind of funny but I buy a lot of a lot of stuff from the US so this right here um, it's in pieces but it works that works perfectly fine shout out by the way to lab guy from uh, lab guys world a YouTube channel Richard and deal uh, if I remember right uh, because he sold me this um, little TV so this is a very very iconic uh, little TRT this is actually a TV and as you can see it's very small when you compare it to uh, to this thing we just had so you can see here it's this is slightly smaller I believe or pretty much the same in fact in terms of screen size it's really really similar but these are nothing in common this is as I said a beam index tube but this is a full-blown um, Trinitron uh, sorry 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 uh, shadow mask uh, tube I mean with a with a shadow mask not a Trinitron there are no Trinitrons that are that small but there is a Trinitron that is um, like this and I got one I'm gonna bring it to uh, in a moment but anyway what my point is here um, I intend on making something similar with this one so I can have um, show pieces for beam index shadow mask here color wheel and uh, I might miss something, but I believe it's pretty much, I mean Trinitron, but Trinitron is bigger, so I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not gonna do something like that. The thing with Trinitron is, sure, the technology is different, but it's the same kind of principle with a mask inside, and uh, there are tr three guns in here, which is pretty impressive, considering this is a, this is a normal shadow mask tube, just very, very compact. It's quite impressive. So this is the um, this is the um, what's the name for this again? Um, CT one hundred one um, Panasonic, yeah. So Panasonic CT one hundred one uh, color TV. Uh, I'm gonna write the uh, the size of the of the tube down here because I don't have it in uh, in my head right now. But yeah, so there's that. And for each one of these, I intend of, of, of making a a small stand. So let me put this aside. And last thing, I'm gonna bring in a video here. I'll be right back. So well, that's much bigger. So I'm gonna pull 
the camera back a bit here like that so this is a sorry for the dust well there's actually a lot a lot of dust on here because all that stuff is just sitting don't have much time to work on it but yeah I'm gonna find the time at some point so the thing with this one is um, if we can see it nicely here this works but I believe it's got some little issues but overall it's working probably needs some uh, recapping and stuff but this is the smallest color uh, Trinitron tube there is it's a PVM it's a PVM 4 4000 you can see underneath here on the on the sticker here what it says it says PVM 4000 P Trinitron color video monitor so it's a PVM and on the back it's got input for um, composite or this would be a proprietary plug that that's got power and uh, video from a camera I believe it controls for a uh, focus and stuff on the back and this is just the um, the tally light uh, one used with, uh, with cameras and stuff no, nothing I was really needing my goal with this was to keep it original pretty much but the thing is it's in it's in a rough shape I got it for really really good price like uh, I don't remember what it was but it was less than a hundred or close to a hundred or something like this on eBay and uh, well it's in rough shape it's been repainted and stuff and the original color is actually this color that you can see here so it's nice that the people uh, ooh, the previous owners did not paint over the indications here but yeah I thought I would if I can't find a second one because if I can I'm just gonna take it apart and see what I can do with this one if not I might actually make a stainless steel or or aluminum actually uh, cover for this that would be quite similar to this one it won't have the indication sadly or I'm just gonna put um, stickers on them or engrave in the aluminum in fact I'll, I don't know I'll see but it kind of costly for what it is and but it's worth it because that's a really really nice uh, piece of equipment here so that's four inches if I remember right four inches smallest Trinitron smallest color PVM there might be a smallest PVM but black and white so there is also a TV that I got that uses the exact same tube of the, uh, as, uh, as this one four inches but this is much better quality on the display because of the electronics this being a PVM so there is that and something else as well there is no power button like it just there's no power button literally but the nice thing is the component the part number for the power button is uh, still manufactured uh, so I can just get a replacement one I don't know what year this was manufactured I don't really know how to read the um, how to read the um, serial numbers or whatever I don't remember but 90s I guess maybe uh, maybe late 80s or something really nice so these are pretty much all the smallest uh, tubes of um, every technology at least that I got my hands on oh wait there's one last thing there's actually one last also different technology so let me bring it as well there we go sorry for the light again maybe I'm gonna lower this a bit should be a little better here so this one again dust I'm gonna just wipe it down a little bit here so it looks a bit better like so so this thing is a JVC TM L500 PN as you can see on the sticker here right there uh, there's the story behind this unfortunately so it's very sad I uh, actually got the very small very um, little bit smaller one I mean the 450 TU something like this I guess again I'm gonna write it down here so yeah I got one and uh, it was tested and everything the seller had um, uh, had a, a, a photo of it working on a professional tape uh, deck or something like that um, and it, it was showing it working fine and I got it from the US got it shipped um, I'm from Rainian Island so that's really really far but it got here just fine and the moment the package uh, arrived yeah DHL Express the moment the package arrived in Rainian Island it just got lost and um, 
Well, I mean, I can't get refunded or anything, but the problem is I can't find these things. So even if I get a refund, I didn't spend a lot of money on this, but I can't find another one. So, so far I haven't found the 450 again, but I was really glad to find this one, the 500. Um, as you can see, I like to have the smallest one of every uh, CRT, but this is not the smallest, but frankly, I don't really care. I got the technology. Um, so I'm gonna explain in, in a second what it is. Just have a quick look at around the thing. So you saw underneath already. There is a handle here actually, but a metallic uh, aluminum or something handle uh, or stainless, but unfortunately it didn't get with this one. I'm just glad it's still in a pretty good shape. Uh, and on the back, there is like uh, the module here. It's power supply that bolts here, but it's just an external power supply really. Some dust here. And it plugs in here. So it says 19 volts. But this thing actually takes 12 volts as well in this plug. I just don't have the plug itself. So I'm gonna see if I can, at some point I can get a plug that fits here. Uh, and it, it has two inputs. Again, uh, composite inputs, video A and B, in and out. So you can send video in and have it come out for something else. Sorry. And then audio. Uh, I don't think there's a speaker built in. Is there a speaker built in? I don't, I forgot. There might be a speaker built in, frankly. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, maybe a speaker. I can't see it from, from where I'm at here. But anyway, the thing about this is the technology is called LCCS from JVC, or actually might be, uh, it might originate from Tektronix. I don't know because they have it as well on uh, some of their scopes. Uh, and this is literally the same kind of technology used here, except instead of being mechanical, the color shutter is LCD. So this is also a black and white tube. So the, the impressive thing is we got a five inch here um, display that is incredibly sharp. And I mean, really, really sharp for what it is as a CRT that's like from, this is actually from the early 2000s. So it's, it's really probably the earliest one of all these. And um, this is a black and white tube covered with a LCD. So this is just a protective plastic thing. But what you can see here, that's really dark actually considered uh, how like white these are. But this is uh, because there's a LCD in front of it. And if you just flip it, like you remove the front panel here and you flip it, you're gonna see a black and white picture. You put it back and it's color again. So that's pretty damn nice. Now, if you move your head and just look like this in front of the screen, you know, moving your eyes, you're gonna see the colors. You're gonna see the separate colors, like slightly. But if you just look at the screen normally, it's incredibly sharp. It's really, really nice to watch. And it does not flicker because once again, this thing works at three times uh, whatever frequency is being inputted here. Like if it's 60 Hertz, because I believe this does uh, 50 and 60, it might be wrong. Uh, but if you show uh, 50 Hertz, it's gonna be at, it's gonna actually refresh the screen uh, three times for each frame to display each color. So it's gonna be three times faster refresh at 160, uh, sorry, 150 Hertz and 180 Hertz if it's displaying, displaying um, 60 Hertz. Really, really impressive. I love this thing. Once again, these are old devices, so it does work and then it does not anymore. So, I mean, I'm not gonna plug it in because right where I'm at, I wanted to show everything, but I did not exactly want to plug it in because I don't have any power supply around. But again, this kind of technology, I don't have a small CRT that is like uh, one inch or something to make uh, that kind of thing out of it. But it's basically the same thing as the color wheel, but just more recent using LCD instead of a mechanical thing that rotates. That's all. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna end it here. I went through everything and if I manage to take this one apart correctly and um, power it up, I'm gonna make another video. Not if, but when, hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, then well, I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix it. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching.